Hi everyone, Jeremy Edge with EscapeFromThe.com, and we are all, we are in unprecedented times. Um, it goes without saying, this is a, a absolutely crazy time being in this pandemic, having to do social distancing and quarantine. Um, you know, our kids are having to spend a lot more time online because of academics, because of not being able to go outside and see their friends, or even do a lot of activities that they normally would do. And so now we have to do a lot more time online. Our kids are forced to have a lot more time online as well. But how do we as parents navigate how to do that? You know, a lot of times we can be worried that there's going to be too much screen time. There's going to be too much screen use. It's a bad thing. Um, you know, now that we are online a lot more, what is that going to do to our kids' mental health and well-being? Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about just what we can do now in this time. I have a presentation devoted strictly to that. It's called um, Screen Time Parenting, the Pandemic Edition, Navigating Healthy Screen Use for Our Children During COVID-19 Pandemic. Um, there's not one way, one perfect way to do it, but there are some information here that hopefully you can take with you and really help apply to your life. If you have a teenager, if you have a, if a kid or a child, um, this can be something that could hopefully help you during this pandemic. All right, so the first thing, I mean, when we look at this COVID-19 regarding screen time, it will increase. Our screen time is going to increase. Their, your kid's screen time is going to increase. They'll spend probably a lot more time gaming, a lot more time watching YouTubes and maybe social media, um, and maybe even pornography. If they're a teenager, if they're kind of exploring their sexuality, this could be something that they, all of these things could increase. Um, it's natural to worry about our kids spending more time online. There'll be a lot more leisure time, and so it's natural for us to worry about what our kids are doing online. Um, the current standing of screen use, um, as far as I kind of gold, you know, good standards from the World Health Organization, one of the big things prior to the pandemic is talked about gaming disorder. And gaming disorder is a diagnosis that will be fully diagnosable in 2022. Um, and it's basically when someone is, their overall well-being is being um, taken away by gaming. Their um, gaming is negatively impacting a lot of areas in their life. And so this is one area that, you know, a gaming addiction can be a very real thing, can be a problem. Not for a lot, but for some. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics also has some screen time and screen use recommendations. From ages two to five, they recommend around one hour of high quality programming. Um, that consists of Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, Sesame Street. Uh, if you're going to old school, you can do Mr. Rogers. Basically content that's going to be educational and help them learn something new. Um, again, one hour for that time for that age group. Older than five, there's around like maybe two hours or so is has been discussed a lot. But really, when we look at the American Academy of Pediatrics, there isn't really an exact time frame. There's moderation is the big piece of that. Um, you know, and there's 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 a lot of types of screen use. There's productive screen use, which is like academic and learning something new. There's entertaining screen use. Sometimes where we are, you know, going on YouTube or um, spending time with social media or gaming. Those are all entertaining types of screen use. And then we also have social. Social is, is can be kind of a mix of entertaining as well, but social can be social media, trying to hang out with friends or talk with friends, FaceTime, using Zoom. Those are all social interactions. Um, and so right now, these are kind of some of the big standards is gaming can be a problem, um, but it doesn't have to be for a lot of people. And then also here's some recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Pandemics change a lot of things. Like this pandemic in particular has changed a lot of things. The World Health Organization, having this diagnosis, has um, started a hashtag called Play Apart Together. Ray Chambers is a part of the World Health Organization, and he started this, um, he's been a part of this hashtag to bring gaming companies together to help people encourage social, dis social distancing and help people stay indoors and to be safe and to flatten the curve. Um, it's it encourage people to play video games, to, to hang out online together, to, to play a part together. Um, and so that's a really big change from um, this focus a lot of us have had on gaming disorder, it being a problem, it being an addiction. And yes, it is. However, there's a, a lot of legitimacy to gaming and how it can be a good thing. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics has put out some recommendations to how to handle this pandemic. There are um, a lot of different things, and I'll put a link to this video in the notes. But the three big points is to make a plan. Make a plan of what you want your screen use to look like for your child. 
um, you know, have either a set schedule or have a set time frame that they can spend time online being productive and they can do their work. And then have a set time frame of when they can hang out with friends online and when they can play, when they can do entertaining things. But have a plan in place um, and talk about that with your child. Then also we need to be intentional about our screen use. We can't just um, say, okay, do your homework and then you can play for us today. Let's be intentional about what type of screen use we're using. Um, that's been another big piece of it. Use screens for good. So use screens to bring people together to kind of learn something new about your child, um, but, but use our time online to, to, for, for a good purpose. It's natural that our screen use will increase. It's natural that our kids' screen use will increase. It does not necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Um, and we'll talk more about that in this next slide. There's a um, New York Times article that was published not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, entitled, titled Agonizing Over Screen Time. Um, they interview a pediatrician talking about screen use and screen time. And some big takeaways is, of that is screen use is not bad. It's really easy for us to say screen time or screen use is a bad thing. Um, it's, you know, associated with gaming disorder. You know, my kid only wants to be online and social media. And yes, there are a few, a few cases that there is a problem with the amount of screen use we have. Um, but it's not the entire case. If we demonize all types of screen use, then we are not really being fair to what our child is able, capable of doing and what the screen use is really intended for. There are different types of screen time. We talked about a little bit before. There is productive, entertaining, and social. Um, those are some three big categories of why we go online. And so if we spend two, three hours online, you know, doing, you know, um, education and academic stuff in the morning, and then we do an hour of gaming or an hour of social media after that, those are two different things, two different types of screen use. As adults, we spend a lot of, time, a lot of us spend a lot of time online and we use it for productive time. So it's okay, again, for us to spend a lot of time online, but the screen use needs to be understood of what type of screen use we're using. The uh, article talks about three different C's. Okay, so we need, to know, we need to understand our child, we know the content, and then the context. And what that means is the child, we need to know what our child is like. Does our child like to, you know, in, in, is creative? Do they like music? Do they like to be able to build and create things? Then th let's gear them towards something that um, enhances that interest. Help them do a game that is musically inclined or to build something that they're able to, to you know, to develop that idea, that, that skill. Um, the content is something that we need to be intentional about. So whenever we are, um, you know, saying, okay, go, just go watch any type of television show, for example, or anything on Netflix, it's not really the best thing. Let's, let's spend a lot of time, um, spend some time doing um, like intentional screen time with our, what we watch. Uh, the article talks about the difference between, you know, a show like PJ Maxx versus maybe Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood or Mr. Rogers. PJ Maxx is a very fast paced show, a um, lot of lights and very fast paced. And what they're saying in the article is it's linking um, attention issues with kids who watch a lot of shows that are fast paced like that. So it's encouraging kids to watch shows a little bit slower pace help them kind of see things going at a maybe slower rate rather than just being very fast, you know, here, go, 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 go. So what we're consuming is also important. The context is the last piece they talk about in this article. Um, and that is something where like, if we can't be with our kid, let's say after, you know, they watch a Daniel Tiger show or if, you know, after they finish you know, playing a game and we can't talk with them about it, try to be intentional to later talk about it with them. Um, if we're not able to spend time with them, they, they suggest in the article, to maybe encourage FaceTime with their friends or their other family members. So they're getting an engagement from others um, that, uh, during that time. There is a way that we can really help utilize our screen time. And I've come up with this uh, model called ACE. Uh, we can ACE our screen use this pandemic. And first thing we need to do as parents is to allow screen use to happen. Give time online. Give time, obviously, for schoolwork, but give time to relax. Give time to be able for them to enjoy what they're doing online. During that time, yes, we have our work. Yes, we have our responsibilities. But spend a little bit of time understanding and learning what they're doing online, why they like to go online, what they're gaining from it, and learn and spend some time understanding their world of, of their entertainment world, whatever that looks like. Then we need to communicate our 
perspective and our boundaries. Okay, as a parent, we have every right to be able to say, okay, this is awesome. You're able to spend time playing Minecraft, but there's a limit to it. We can't spend all day online. We have to diversify our activities. This is the next piece. We need to, to diversify our activities where it's not just all the time online. Um, and so it's okay that, again, screen time will increase, but it's also okay to have a standard of what you want to see, um, what is able to help work for your family and your child. The last thing is to enforce. We need to, we need to follow up. We need to enforce our boundaries. When we are saying, um, okay, I want you to spend four hours of, you know, of time gaming today, then I, you know, after that four hours, if we don't do anything about it, if we don't follow up with something, with the conversation or turning off Wi-Fi or whatever, then we're allowing that child to then go and play more and more and more. And they don't see there's any consequence, so they can play more. And we we do need to have limits and boundaries because screen time can be screen use can be very fun and engaging, especially the entertainment side of it. And so we need to be able to to cater that, to control that because if left to their own devices, left to their own time, then sure, they'd be able to probably play a lot of games for a long period of time, you know, and we need to be able to, to control that and rein that in. So again, allow your kid to be online. It's okay that that happens. Communicate though, and you have a lot of communication on what they're gaining from it, what your expectations are, what your boundaries are. Communicate how to diversify your activities and then enforce these things, enforce the consequences or enforce um, this plan that you have in place. Um, one of the big things too we need to do is we need to give ourselves and our, our kids grace. Um, these are super difficult times um, to not have things go perfectly, to not have, okay, so sure, we spent more than you know five hours online today um, playing Fortnite. Okay, give yourself grace. Give your child grace. Think mistakes happen or like, you know, this, this isn't, this isn't going to be the norm forever. When we go back to school, when we go back to our work, we're going to be able to get back into a, to a regular routine. Right now, it's pretty crazy. So let's talk about it with your family, though. Talk about it with your kid and give yourself grace. Um, again, give, give your child grace. Give yourself grace. Um, spending more time online does not necessarily mean that there will be an addiction. Um, you know your child best. And so if you feel like they are um, hyper-focused on maybe a game or they're hyper-focused on something, that can be good and that hyper focus can really drive them to do great things but we need to be able to help maybe diversify some of that focus um, so it's not all consuming um, so again it's okay that our screen time will increase but it, is, it does not mean that there will be an addiction we will get through this we're going to be able to get through this pandemic it's not going to last forever um, we'll get on the other side i offer counseling services during this time with online um, completely online right now I offer individual, family, and parenting counseling. So if there is a concern for your family, there's a concern about how to navigate street, healthy screen use, that's um, the biggest piece that I do in my practice. I help navigate um, healthy screen use. I help also work on managing anxiety, stress, and depression with it, for any um, age range. Um, and counseling really is a safe place to explore and find insights and, and talk about what's going on. Even if you don't have uh, a clue about how to be able to get through this time, that's okay. The counseling process of talking and thinking things through in a safe environment can be very, very healing. And I offer that um, once a week, every other month, every other week, whatever you'd like to do. Um, give me a call. Give me, um, shoot me an email if you found this helpful. If you feel like you would like to follow up with any information that I talked about in here, let me, give me a call if you'd like to set up an appointment or even an intake offer a free consultation to be able to talk about what's going on in your life and how I can help or what you have already in place and how you can get the most support that's not with me. Um, stay safe and do the best you can to be able to spend time with your family and engage these relationships. Know that we'll get through this and know that our screen time, screen use can add to our life and add value to our life during this time rather than it being a stressor for us. Till next time, take care and I'll see you later. All right, bye-bye.